Hi everyone, welcome to introductory Python tutorials with a special focus on image processing. In this video, let's have a look at building a unit using encoder and decoder blocks. What does that mean? Well, in tutorial 115, the one uh, before, not the one before this, but the one before that one, uh, the previous one, we looked at unit and we actually built unit by defining every layer, like we defined two convolution layers, and then activation, right? And then we define convolution layers, sorry, uh, and max pooling, two convolution layers, max pooling, and so on. And we realize that there are some patterns. These blocks are repeating. So how about defining those as separate functions for encoder and decoder, and then actually with a few lines of code, build a unit. And this can be very useful if you really would like to uh, define a, a almost like a universal unit where you just change a couple of parameters and then you can customize this for binary uh, segmentation. You can customize this for multi-class segmentation. How about extending this to 3D uh, topic, right? So you can, you, can, you can build your own units. This is not very difficult. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. And again, a quick recap of uh, unit. This is the unit from original paper. And uh, uh, as you can see, we are going down and there are certain specific operations uh, as we go down. And in the video 115, tutorial 115, we looked at implementing this unit using 256 by 256 one images. Here is the structure that we looked at. And we said, okay, going from 256 to 128 to 64 to 32 to 16, right? Again, watch the last video to understand this decoder part. We talked about upsampling. We also talked about conv2d transpose. Either way, you're going from 16 by 16 to 32 to 64 to 128, and finally to 256, which happens to be the original size of our image because you want your segmented image to be the same size as your original image, yeah? So we built this by writing each line here. So this is my input and then comes two convolution layers and max pooling. Two convolution, max pooling, right? This is exactly what we have. Two convolutions, the blue arrows, max pooling, red arrow. Two convolution, blue arrows, red arrow, and so on. Then we realized a bunch of these are repeating. Uh, so why not just assign blocks? So what do we mean by that? For example, let's uh, look at these two operations right there. So we are performing a convolution, right? We are performing a convolution convolution and max pooling. What is the output after each of these? So I'm assigning certain uh, certain name to it. I'm saying, okay, the output of my convolution layers is S1. The output of my convolution layers is S1 at this point, And the output of max pooling is P1. Okay, let's go back. The output of this second operation is S1. And the output of uh, the pooling is P1. Everything will come together in a second. So at the first layer, the output of Conv2D is 256 because we are not doing any pooling, nothing. It's just that we'll have 64 filters. At this point, the size of this is 256. We have 64 filters. After max pooling, the size goes down to 128. Now go back to the code. So at this point, S1 has a size of 256. P1 has a size of 128. Here, S2 has a size of 128 because what is S2? It's coming the input from P1. Yeah? Again, let's look at this in the uh, diagram here. So this is the input. This is the P1. That input is going into my S2. Okay? Right there. And then after the S2 operation, you get the next step and so on. So let's assign certain... certain um, parameters, uh, variables, so it makes it easy for us to define our model. So let's say the convolution output is S1 and the max pooling output is P1 right there at this point, at the tip of this arrow. The two things that we need, one is S1, the other one is P1. S1 corresponds to the output of this convolution layer and P1 corresponds to the output of this max pooling that goes as input to the next one. Why do we need the output of convolution before max pooling, right? When we say that, I'm saying output before max pooling. Why do I need that? Well, I need that so I can send that output to this layer right here for concatenation. That's what unit is. So if we come back, if I take my S1, that S1 
is connected to D4 right there. This is the reason I want my S1 as a separate output. I hope so far so good. So let's now continue this. So S1, P1, S2, P2, S3, P3. After each of these, you get uh, the convolution output, max pulling output. And you have the base right there. Okay, right here. After this, we are going up. While going up, we have our, uh, our decoder one, decoder two. We don't need to send uh, two outputs while we are going up because we are not doing uh, anything with that. All we need is output from here that can be provided as input to the next decoder block. So each of this decoder block, encoder block, we'll define that in a second. So the outputs are D1, D2, D3, and then D4 is basically going towards your output. So now let's define, let's identify some repetitive patterns here. You see the blue boxes here? These are repetitive uh, convolutional blocks. If you just look at this, two blue arrows, that's it. Two blue arrows, two blue arrows, two blue arrows, and so on. Even going back up, you have the convolution layers, right? So why not define that as a function? That's step number one, we'll do that. And how do we do that? So in our case, the convolution block, the way we are going to define is conv2d, Right, that's conv2d. And then you can define the next conv2d, but I'm adding batch normalization. So it, it kind of balances things out. Batch normalization is very good. Uh, uh, you know, it, it makes convergence a bit easier. Let me put it that way. Again, watch the video on batch normalization, but just a, a quick note. So this rectangle that says 64 up here is this part of the code, which is basically conv2d with batch normalization and then applying ReLU activation, right? So here, con to, uh, uh, three by three uh, is my filter size right there, and then ReLU activation. All I did is add batch normalization, that's it. And then the second one right there, which is pretty much the same as the first one, con 2D batch activation. This is my convolution block, okay? What else is repeating? This block is repeating. <laughs> Convolution block plus max pooling. I mean, you may think this, these are the same. The blue box is up to that point without max pooling. The red box is with max pooling. This is also repeating in the encoder four times. One, two, three, four. So let's define the encoder block, which is nothing but a combination of convolution block and max pooling. And this encoder block is giving us two outputs, S1, or S and P, right? Again, here I called it X, but think of this as S, okay? Which is uh, the output from convolution block is your X, and P is the output from the max pooling. So these are the two, and you know exactly why we need X. We need X so we can concatenate with whatever that uh, D is over there. We need P so that can go into the next convolution block or encoder block if you wanna call it. Okay, what else is repeating? These green boxes, right? These are decoder blocks. Previously, we had encoder blocks going down. Now we have decoder block. What's the difference between encoder and decoder block? They're kind of symmetric, but here we have concatenation. So we need to add that. So let's go ahead and add it. My decoder block takes in input from the previous layer. Skip features are these shortcuts. They call the, I mean, it's common terminology for these shortcuts are skip features. So that's what that is, and number of filters. So what operation happens first? You see up here, up conv two by two. So we are going to perform conv 2D transpose, or you can do up sampling, you know, followed by convolution, but this, this just follow this. Conv 2D transpose, and it takes number of filters. So if, my, if I say my number of filters is 256, that's what I get. If my number of filters is 128, that's what I get after this green conv 2D operation. To this output, I need to add the input coming from there. So that's exactly what the skip features are for. So concatenate this output and the skip features together. This is that block right there. And once you concatenate, add the convolution block. Remember, this part is the conv block, right? We repeat it just to say. This part, the blue box, is the conv. So after concatenating, just do the convolution block. That's exactly what we are trying to do there. Convolution block. Isn't that simple? Okay, so this is where now you can kind of see how this fits in. Yeah, so these outputs 
And now let's put all of this together to build this unit. How do you put them together? There you go. So apply an encoder block on the input with 64 filters. There you go. That's where you get. And what does an encoder block give you? What output does an encoder block give you? It gives you the skip connection, like the output of the convolution block and max pooling. Again, I'm repeating this because this is important. The first one, this one, X, is concatenated. P goes to the next level, okay? So let's go back. It gives you two things, right? X, now I'm calling it S1 and P1. P1 is what goes to the next encoder block, right? This is the next encoder block with 128 filters. That's where P1 is. This encoder block gives you S2 and P2 as outputs, and then it continues all the way down to this base, B1, and then the decoder block. Here, we are taking B1 right there, and then we copy that part here, or we concatenate that part here, which is S4, right? Uh, yeah, right there, sorry. S4, this one is S4. I put it down here, can be a bit confusing, but S4 is the convolutional output coming from here. So you put S4 along with D1, and then you put S3, which comes out of here, this one, along with D2, right? D, D1, S3, sorry, D1 right there, uh, S3 and then comes uh, D2, S2, and so on. So you concatenate these things together. If I got it wrong, go ahead and fix it, but we are going to check it out in our next, uh, uh, you know, in the next part of this uh, tutorial where we look at the code anyway. So don't worry about any any of these here, if there is a mismatch, but I don't think there is any, but just, just giving you a heads up. So finally, what is my output? My output is a convolution 2D operation. This is the output. Up to this point, we are done. This final output is a con 2 d operation with one by one kernel and activation sigmoid, right? This is, uh, a, in this example, this is a binary semantic segmentation. So the output, so I'm going to use activation sigmoid. Always remember, multi-class classification, softmax activation. Binary classification, sigmoid activation but this is semantic segmentation. What, what am I talking about? Semantic segmentation is same as classification, except you're classifying every pixel instead of the entire image. So the same rules apply. Okay, so that's where, that's where you are. So let's jump to the code and uh, see if we can learn even more. <laughs> okay, so exactly the same thing. Now I'm importing the libraries. Let's go ahead and connect, first of all. And uh, let's check the runtime, change runtime type. I'm not using GPU because you don't need GPU here. We are just building a model, okay? We are not going to use GPU. Um, okay, so from keras.layers, uh, I'm going to in, uh, import the input, con2d, max pulling 2 d If you wanna use upsampling, go ahead and use it, but I'm gonna use con2d transpose as I already showed you. And then you can add dropouts and others if you want. So let's go ahead and import our uh, uh, libraries again this should be nothing new to you and now let's define the convolution block again I don't want to repeat everything that I talked about this is literally what we saw earlier the convolution block okay in the presentation now encoder block is nothing but convolution block with max pooling and then we give both the output of a convolution block and the max pooling uh, we, we are going to return those two and one of these like that one is going in as uh, input for the next decoder block. So let's go ahead and define the decoder. And this is the way we build our unit. And uh, I added this uh, function earlier to this recording of this video where uh, I said, okay, if my number of classes, because that's one of the inputs, right? If my number of classes equal to one, which means it's a binary classification. Remember, binary classification means you have one class and, uh, uh, and the problem is defined as it's either background like zero or one. That's binary. So you have a dark background and you have like your objects in bright. So this is binary classification. So it's either zero or one. So if that's the case, use sigmoid. Otherwise use activation as softmax. So we can call this no matter how many, uh, 
you know, uh, no matter how many classes you're going to segment. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, let's build our unit. Let's say my input shape is not just a grayscale, but a color image, 256 by 256 by three, and my number of classes equals to one. Go ahead and print the summary. So here is the summary. Let's scroll down and start from the top. There you go. It starts with 256, 256, 3 as your input layer, and then 64, 64, right? And so on all the way down to 1024, and then all the way back to 256, 256, 1. Why 1? This is a binary, again, binary classification. So you either have 0 or 1. Now let's change this to a multi-class. How do we change this to multi-class? So for multi-class, still my input images are color here, you can change that to grayscale. If that is grayscale, your input would be 256, 256, one, right? Uh, but let's change that to color that. And number of classes, let's say I have four classes, four different regions that I want to identify in my semantic segmentation. Just type four. You see the output layer, it has to come up with four. Yeah, so let's go down and there you go. 256, 256, four, okay? And then once you have your model, you just uh, compile uh, right here. And uh, did I print the activation just to show you? Sorry about this. Let's go back up. Yeah, you can print the activation right there to see if it is really using softmax or sigmoid. I mean, this is pretty straightforward. It should be using softmax because this is a uh, number of classes is more than one. OK, so uh, this is let's go down. And once you have the model defined, then you need to compile it. Right. So for compilation of this model, you can use a uh, stochastic gradient descent or something that's based on stochastic gradient descent uh, type of uh, 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 optimizer. So I've, in this example, Adam and uh, loss function. So in this example, binary cross entropy, which is the wrong one to use if it is multi class. For multi class, it should be uh, it, uh, multi cross entropy or uh, you know categorical cross entropy, not binary. Okay, make sure you use the right loss functions. And then for metrics, I'm going to use accuracy right now. By the way, I should already mention that using an accuracy as a metric for semantic segmentation is not good. Well, it's not going to uh, give you. It it is going to uh, you know uh, it's it's going to converge. It's not like. But the problem is. It's easy to get 95, 98, 99% accuracy, but still get very horrible results. That's because accuracy includes the background. If you have a lot of background, very little of uh, objects, then you do get 98% accuracy, right? So what is the best metric in that case? In that case, the best metric would be something called intersection over union, IOU. Okay, that's the best metric. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, touch about that topic uh, again in the upcoming tutorials. But for now, let me go ahead and stop here because uh, now we have a model that works fine. We have this model that works fine for binary or multi-class. So let's start in the next video. Let's talk about binary classification. Let's see how we can apply this to a binary classification problem. And the one after that, let's look at multi-class classification. And then later on, we'll look at 3D data sets and so on. Okay, so please stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, and let's meet in the next video.